G'day. Welcome to another episode. Yeah. Woo. Get it in ya. Get it in ya. You will see behind us one empty boat trailer that we tried to get drone footage of us getting it off, but then the drone decided to go walk about off into a tree. So, yeah, but the boat's in the water, that's the main thing. Which is very exciting. So the drone is still alive, which is the second main thing. And we are in... Where are we? Lakefield National Lakefield. Park. I don't know particularly where, we're on a freshwater creek, so. <laughs> we are going fishing with the new motor, finally. Yeah, so first run of the new motor. Uh, we're gonna chase some barra along the creek here, flick a few snags. Hopefully we'll get one. If you don't follow us on Instagram, yes, we bought a new motor. So we upgraded from the 15 horsepower to the 20, um, just because we were finding that the boat wasn't coping with both of us in the water. Both of us in the water, both of us in the boat. Yeah, too much, too much weight. So this one's a little bit more powerful and it's four strokes, so it's a lot quieter. Should use less fuel, they tell me, about half the amount of fuel, the old two stroke. So uh, yeah, we've finally, you can blow some dust out of it and actually test it. Cause she is very dusty. So obviously we took her up to Cape Melville. Um, you will know from the previous episode, tried to get her in the water there, but got bogged. And then the wind was starting to blow up. So we were like, oh, just let's head inland to get in the fresh water and try and catch some barra. Yeah. Yep, let's do it. Hopefully yeah, we'll get, get a good one. We can cook it up later on. And we'll do a catch and cook. Yeah. We tried to do this at Lake Tinaru, but you would have never seen the content for Lake Tinaru because there was no catch. <laughs> so there was no cook. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right, we'll see you on the water. Let's book. You really good at fair heat now. Oh dear. This thing's gonna end up in the drink, eh? Holy dolly. <laughs> Got some go away. Oh. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. It sets it up on the plane or something instantly. talk at all when the motor's running. Even now when you have it idling? Yeah, when she's just idle. Two knots. And the other one used to idle a little bit slower. Six metres in it. Oh, deep. This is the deep hole, that's shallow. Come out and have a look at it. Came out twice, just swam past it. Yep. Just a little guy. But he's a fish. That's 
Good to get one. No keeper barrows, but I'll um, go and check the cherubin pots. So we've still got a couple out. We've got a couple there from yesterday. So hopefully we can get a few of them to cook something up. Might do a bit more fishing later on. Well, depends what time it is. Um, but this disappears into a little creek and some more little lagoons. So we might go over there if we're um, yeah, if we've got the time. Um, but if not, we'll see how the cherubin pots go. Check some cherubin pots. We got a few there the night before. Got one stonker too, which is good. So hopefully we get a couple others. Been using um, granola as bait. Funny enough, which yeah seems to. Good morning. So that battery just died as I grabbed that pot out, but there's a pretty good haul. There's a couple good sized ones in there. Not as big as that one we got the other day, but... Yeah, he's still pretty close. Yeah, he's, he's good size anyway. Definitely, um, yeah, definitely feed us hungry boys. But the little baby one can probably go back. Yeah, it might have been one of the little ones. I'll go and see oh. what the other one's in. I'll let you go do that. I'll go and watch that. Radio. But yeah, um, granola is bait. Seems to be working a treat. When we used to do a lot of red chlorine, I used to use, um, the guinea pig pellets. Um, and I found it worked really well because they'd sort of, it would break down slowly and, you know, drift through the water or whatever. And, it, um, yeah, the granola seems to do the same thing. Just got it in a little Ziploc bag with a few holes in it. All right, let's check this one. Typical. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, nothing in that one, but with the ones we got the other day, plus these today, that should be plenty for a feed. So I'll think of a recipe and then I'll see you when we're cooking them. It's all covered up and tied down and ready to go again. We are heading into Laura to get some supplies and then we're going to head up to spot number two in Lakefield National Park and head up towards the mouth of the river, so back in the salt. It was really interesting last night. There was um, two sets of glowy eyes on the bank opposite us, which we could see with our head torches. So definitely a couple of crocs around. We just don't know if they were freshies or salties, but you can see those trees over there. They were sat perched up on those logs. And Shane, want, then one swam across to the same bank as us and Shane wanted to go investigating, but I was like, hell no. Just in case it's big salties. But anyway, we'll see you at site number two.
You know it's hot and even the wind, the wind is hot. Like the wind does not give you reprieve or break. Yeah, she's a hot one today. So Shayna was just looking if there was a little hole that we could quickly go for a dunk that would be low croc risk, but no. So he's gonna pour a bucket of water on himself. Nothing? No one wants to see that. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, mate, you could have that on a, on a shampoo ad or something, I reckon. <laughs> oh, I might get one more. One more? Yay! That's, that's the one thing I'm looking forward to getting out of croc, croc country is being able to swim again. Yeah, croc country, that's something <laughs> different. Croc country. <laughs> I'll show you around. <laughs> Terrible. Before we get into the cook part of our catch and cook with our cherubin, um, we pulled up pretty late to camp as you can see the sunset. Shano wants to try and get some live bait to do some fishing, so he's got out the cast net, which yeah. is a new one, hasn't been used yet. How many years has it been since you've thrown a cast net? It's been a while. All right, it's been a good few years. Hopefully there's no snags, otherwise there may be some expletives. Snagged on me. That was pretty good. Not too bad. No snakes, no snakes, no snakes. No luck though. No. Do you want to turn your head torch off for me? Oh, of course, yes. Uh, you have to cook without it, I'm afraid. Right, we're ready. We're recording? Yeah. Oh, fuck, we're ready. All right, g'day. Welcome to the first, first catch and cook. Well, first cook, we did the catch, so. Um, right, what we're doing today is cherubin. We didn't get the barra that we were hoping for, so cherubin it is. Um, you don't know what a cherubin is, it's kind of that guy. So, they're like a freshwater prawn. Um, yeah, we just got these guys in the pot, so they're delicious. Not as good, obviously, as a prawn because they don't live in salt water, um, but they're pretty good. So, basically what I'm gonna do today is a, it's just something I've made up. Um, it's just gonna be like a, a chili garlic sauce uh, with a bit of rice. So, the main, the main gourmet is that. Thai roasted chili paste. Get in there, nice and deep. That's good stuff. So, um, Asian groceries, yeah, you can't get that at Woolies, but it's damn good. Make good stir fry sauces, excellent sauces for this sort of stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a quick stock with the shells and the head, and then we're gonna do a bit of a, like a reduction, a cook with that um, and the stock. And it's just going to go over some rice with some veggies. So, just notice these are quite filthy. So, I'll wash them before I peel them, um, which we might do now. Okay, just grab that buzz. Any tips for peeling them? Uh, I guess you peel them just like a. You just, want to explain it? Yeah, just just like a regular prawn, I suppose. So you pinch the head off, um, work your way down the shell, like that. And you sort of just 
peel them all off together. Um, we'll take the tail off. Take the tail off. Take the tail off, I reckon. Yeah. First. You know, if you were flash Murray in a restaurant, you'd probably leave the tail on because it's nice. We're not gonna. Yeah, with any prawns or seafood, I suppose. That, you know, when people are doing this sort of stuff, they generally just peel it throw the shells away but the shell on the head that's where all the flavours are. That's, that's what we're doing here. And a, a shellfish stock or a prawn stock or something is, is not like a, a regular meat stock that's got to cook for hours. It's um, you know we just want to get a bit of flavour out of them so oh, 10 minutes will be heaps. Uh, this can be binned. Assistant, sous chef. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> How do I bin this where it's not going to retract the crop? Oh, it's just water. Fishy water. Should be right. Right, so that's just going to go straight on the heat like that. We're going to put a bit of colour in them first. Um, then we're just going to add a bit of water and a bit of salt. That's it. As you see. Look at all that, good stuff. They're like little lobsters, you can, I think there's meat in there, if you can. Seems like a slight waste of energy. Righto, so while that's happening, we'll do the rest of the, the good stuff. This is where the flavour's at. Did you mention the rice is cooking? Oh, the rice is cooking, by the way, yeah. If you need to know how to cook rice, watch, Uncle Roger. watch Uncle Roger or, <laughs> or learn, it's, it's not difficult. Um, all right, so a couple of these dogs. Four? Four sounds good. Never have too much garlic. No, garlic is good for you. Keeps the crocs away, I hear. <laughs> Those vampires, bro. Oh, same thing, right? Check that out. Right, so it's looking pretty good for me, so... We're gonna get that down nice and low. As low as possible. Just gonna chuck a bit of salt in. So anything with like fresh water, yeah, freshwater, um, like cherubin or red claw or anything, you gotta add salt because obviously they don't live in the salt. So they're, if you just cook one and eat them, they're missing that um, saltiness. <laughs> Sweet, so that's on a really gentle simmer. Ideally, if we had, um, yeah, ideally if we had a bit of white wine, that'd be perfect in there, just to help give it a bit more flavour. Um, likewise, you can add chili and that sort of stuff, but this has got everything you need. So um, that's literally just to extract that cherub and flavor. So this is a, what do you call these? A shallot? A shallot. A shallot. You don't say it like that, it sounds like my name. It does a bit. Really good in Asian Thai food. Basically a super strong onion. Um, but yeah, it goes really well in Thai food and with this stuff, so. so I'm just gonna do the same thing, just finely dice that. Right, now we'll just chill for a sec while the stock finishes off. We've only got two burners, so slightly limited. Rice is nearly done, stock's pretty well done. Um, give that a sec, I'll cook this up. This is only gonna take a few minutes. Uh, yeah, then bring it all together. All right, that stock's done, I'm happy with that. So, like I said, that's probably 10 minutes. That's really all it needs. Um, we're just going for all that good looking stuff down the bottom, so that's just pure cherubin flavor. Um, so that's off, we're gonna leave that off the heat for the moment. And we're gonna start on the, on the sauce, on the main event. 
So what I'm gonna do with this is just vegetable oil. So we're gonna we're gonna fry the well we're just gonna like quickly sear uh, the cherubin. It's just gonna put a little bit of colour on and then we're gonna we're gonna cook all the rest of it nice and slowly just so we don't lose any fire. So I'll get that nice and hot. Touch more, let's be real. As if it hasn't been mixed up enough today on the corrugation. That's true actually, we did give it a fair mix of Right, heating up oil, nice and hot. So these are going to go in really quickly just to sear, uh, and I'm going to salt and pepper while they're in there. So, I'm just going to use all of my available hands. They look a bit meager, just like that, don't they? Oh well, it's only two of us, if you're feeding heaps of people, maybe a few more would be nice. But... Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Like I say, literally just to get a bit of colour on. So I'll finish cooking in the sauce. Like any uh, regular prawns, I suppose, you don't want to overcook them. So I'm going to turn that right down now. Nice and low, just let that chill for a sec. Alright, so we're going to go garlic and onion straight in together. So we just want this nice and low for a few minutes. Just want to soften it right down, get all the flavour out. That is not a stirring spoon. <laughs> I'll use this one. <laughs> oh, nothing better. Not good. Oh yeah. Now, do we want this spicy or? A little bit. I always want a little bit of spice. Or I'm just going to chuck a tiny bit uh, more sambal in, so. Just a just a chili extract. Really good, salty, spicy. The Thai roasted chili base has got a little bit of a zing to it, but it's not um, it's not super hot. So we want a little bit more in there. Chuck something in. Fresh chili is ideal. When you're full time gypsies like us, it's a lot easier just to have jars of things. Yeah, so again, frozen veggies for us. Being full time gypsies, it's a lot easier just to have veggies in the freezer rather than fresh stuff, but ideally, you would use a few freshies. So, being that these are frozen, I'm going to chuck this in now. Um, this is pretty well done. Obviously, it's going to sweat a bit of moisture, so that'll just finish it all off, uh, and they'll be sort of, you know, nearly cooked by the time I put everything else in. Alright, so those veggies are soft, softened, slash nearly defrosted, slash whatever you'll call it. So I'm going to go in with a bit of this stuff. The Tyrus chili paste. The chili paste, in case you forgot what it was. Uh, I'm probably going to do... Yeah, like a tablespoon, probably two tablespoons I reckon. Pretty strong stuff, so mm. it's good gear. Full of MSG. <laughs> Our favourite thing. Good boy. So it's gonna, it's gonna mix that in. Just so it breaks down a bit. All right, I'm gonna knock this right down to low. I'm going to throw the stock back in as well as our delicious cherubins. Okay. 
guy. That all nice and coated. And that's not going to need long at all. We're just basically finishing cooking the cherubin. And uh, yeah, making sure everything's nice and hot and delicious. Just gonna chuck a tiny bit of water in that just to give it a bit more substance. Well, I mean, I went a little too far with the stock, but it's okay. Pretty good. Good? Yeah. Yeah, don't even need any salt. I'm just gonna put a little bit of white pep. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Alright. Nothing to Pretty special about this. Gonna do a bit of that. A little bit of this. Had a little bit of coriander. Perfect. Don't have any coriander. So that's us. Get a bit of that in ya. Right oh, let's see what we got here. Oh that's damn good. Is it good? Oh yeah. I can bought one. Mm. You'd think they're prawns, eh? Dead set. You wouldn't know they came out of a semi muddy river. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Get that in ya. Alright, see ya, YouTube. We're gonna go eat. Righty all. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching another episode of Life in a Four Wheel Drive and our very first catch and cook. We had so much fun filming this episode, so I'm sure you'll see more of these in the future. So if you're interested in seeing more catch and cooks from us or just general legendary cooking from old Shano, or perhaps even just our adventures around Australia, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you liked this video in particular or had any feedback for us or any questions, please make sure to give us a like and give us a comment. We really do appreciate the amazing comments we're getting and we can't wait to see you next week.